back. It's been a minute. Oh yeah, I've missed you guys too. <laughs> My wife and I have had the bubonic plague or the bird flu or I, I don't know what we got. The black death tumors. I don't... We, no, oh, I, I've just been informed it's not a tumor. Yeah, we've been sick and so I've been struggling to get a lot of stuff done, but I have been pill you know, piddling away at it and making some progress. And here's a bunch of it right now. Check this out. Shop dog today. She was annoying her mom out there inside, so she came out here to hang out. Oh, she come out here to hang out? Oh, yeah. I guess she's gonna lay right in the way. got these radius I got all the slots cleaned out they're all the right depth now got all the holes drilled for the dots and got the veneer on this headstock got the tuner holes drilled actually let's check on Paul's so Paul's I was gluing the veneer onto the top so it's pretty simple I just stick it on there and clamp it into this bench top vise so that thing's ready to go I'm gonna get it out and trim it up now so I just have a bottom bearing flush trim router bit in one of these small routers. Just go around the headstock and that'll clean it up perfectly. Okay, Paul's headstock is still a little thick, but that's okay. It'll get trimmed down later. You guys ever listen to Will Carter? Check him out if you've never listened to him. All of this stuff at, he did this session at Maple Hall, I think it's called, live at Maple Hall. Just about every single recording from that live at Maple Hall thing is really good. That's getting me through carving these necks right now. Good job, Will. Thank you. I'm kind of at a standstill on these necks right now until my Stumac order comes, which is supposed to be here today, which has the truss rods and the carbon fiber rods and everything I need to kind of finish up these necks. One little detail you have to take care of on these resonator necks is the thickness of that needs to be subtracted from this part of it that goes in the body so that this sits flush with the top. Okay, so you can see now the, where the fretboard comes up, it's flush with the top of the guitar now right here. So there won't be a gap or anything weird going on there. What's next? Next we wait for my Stumac package to arrive. You guys see I got a new blade for my surform thing. Apparently I'm too lazy to put it in my surform tool. So I'm using it like this and it hurts your hands, but you just gotta fight through it. You know, it's nice when you have these laminate necks cause you've got some built in lines that you can kind of work towards. I try to use these lines and I use the line of the binding to just kind of judge how much I'm rounding over. You don't want to round 
all wonky, right? You kind of want to keep a consistent gap between the binding and where you're carving. You don't want to hit the binding. If you hit the binding, it's game over. Like you got, you got a lot of work to do. Okay, these necks have come a long way. Now Paul likes a much thinner neck than I prefer, um, so he's got a pretty thin profile in here, but remember we got the carbon fiber rods in there and the truss rod, so plenty stable. That's a very nice, it's a pretty thin neck. This neck's come a long way. I've got a ton of work to do on this headstock. It's way too fat, I haven't got the holes through the top, I gotta get the logo in there. Uh, this neck's close to being done, but not quite. The other one, yeah, this one's good. The headstock's coming along really well. The heels transitioned nice. The shape is beautiful. It's a wonderful shape. Nice rounded, rolled over edges. Yeah, so these necks are getting close. Getting real close on the necks. All right, let's talk CNC for a second. I've made a couple of really cool parts for these builds. At first, it was just really clunky, and I was really slow with it. I wasn't proficient at it. I had a lot of errors and a lot of issues. I've had some electrical gremlins with it that I had to work out. I had some limit switch errors, just techie stuff that you got to work out and kind of pay your dues with. But I think I'm past all of that because it seems to be working really, really well now. And I'm getting faster and faster at turning around parts on this thing. I really like the idea that National has their logo on their biscuit bridge. I thought that was a cool idea. So I blatantly just stole that from them and I put my own logo on my own biscuit bridge. So here I'm using Fusion to do the cam for my biscuit bridge. You can see I'm just modeling what the CNC machine is going to do here. So I, it's just playing back the simulation of how it's going to cut it. So this way you can kind of just review it first and go, okay, yeah, everything's good. I'm not crashing the tool into the table. I'm not, you know, and then you can take it out to the CNC machine and run it, which is what you see here. This is sped up quite a bit. It, the CNC machines, it, it moves pretty slow. There are times when it can just be really frustrating and you feel like you could just make 10 of whatever it is you're trying to make by hand. But when you look at the quality of the stuff that comes off of this machine, there's just no comparison. It's just amazing the quality that I get. Still learning, but I'm getting way better. I can't imagine doing any of this stuff without it anymore. At first I was like, I don't know, this just takes me so long to program, takes me so long to draw the stuff, takes me so long to cam it, takes me so long to get it to work on the machine. and like. It was all just so slow and just so painful, but now I'm getting way more proficient with it and pretty excited about what I can do with it now. Yeah, what a great addition to the shop this CNC machine's been. All right, the other part that I made was the tailpiece for Paul's guitar, which you can see it's got these three slots in it that sort of tie into the way his sound holes are on the body of his guitar. I think it'll be nice to have this tailpiece just fit the theme is, is what I was going for here. This one you see me drawing right here in Fusion was my first go at it. And when I saw it on screen and I was all done with it, I was like, yeah, that looks really good. I went out and cut it on the CNC and I was like, yeah, I don't like that. So I ended up having to redo it. Um, it was just some spacing stuff and some size things and stuff I wasn't super thrilled with. So, so what you see on the CNC machine here now is my second attempt at it, which I was really happy with this one. I, I, I don't want to change anything. It came out great. Here you can see a bunch of stuff that we've cut out on the CNC machine so far. Obviously we did the cover plate early on. That was I think one of the first things I did actually was that cover plate. We've made all these biscuit bridges and we've got this tailpiece all done. Yeah, very, very happy with the progress of all of that. Okay, here's a milestone that just makes me happy. I'm always excited when I get the holes drilled in the top to attach the neck to the body. I don't, for whatever reason, that just makes me happy. So happy. Not happy. Need to work on that one. That's a big milestone for me. I don't know why. There you have it.
Okay, let's see if we can shave this headstock down to a reasonable thickness. Okay, that shaped up really nice. It's nice and thin now. That's the correct thickness, correct thickness here. What's next? Step number 23,387 is next. Oh, that came out perfect. That's cool. Okay. Okay, Paul's guitar is starting to look like it could be a guitar pretty soon. It's coming along really good. It's going to take a whole day of probably wet sanding. I've got a couple of spots on the edge to clean up. You can see little voids. A couple of little ones to clean up there. Neck is good. I'm glad we got the headstock all thinned out. Got to do the logo, cut the holes for the tuners. Lots to do up there. The bridge isn't quite done yet. But, or the tailpiece, I mean, isn't quite done yet, but it'll get there. So this one's going to come together really fast, I think. What needs a ton of work is this one. <laughs> it's way behind. Yeah, lots of work to do here to get this one caught up to this one. I think the next thing I'm going to do on Paul's is uh, form the cover plate on his, get, the, get it domed on there, and then I'll probably do the cover plate for this one. And I got a couple people. I know Colt wants a cover plate, so I need to make another one for him. And I got another person that wants one of the chicken foot cover plates domed. So I got a lot of grease forming cover plate stuff to do. So I'll probably do that here for the next little bit. And yeah, we'll see where we go after that. Okay, we need to dome some cover plates, put the curvature on the cover plates. And if you guys haven't seen before, I do that with a grease hydroforming type thing. I don't know what to call it. It's not really hydroforming because it's not water. I get a lot of comments and suggestions to just water hydroform it with pressure washer and stuff like that. And yeah, that would probably work great too. At some point I need to speed this process up, but for now, since I know that it's successful with the grease, I'm going to do that. So I had them cut the holes in it and everything so I could do that grease hydroforming with these templates instead of the old wood one that I had. If you guys remember the wood one, I've retired that one now and it's time to get this one up and running. We should be able to get these things done a little bit better than the wood one. If you remember, the wood one used to leak grease out the edge. Okay, zerk fitting is in and I've got my sacrificial piece of metal ready to go. So the cover plate will sit on here. And then we've put these all this sandwich together and we fill it full of grease and this will dome. Okay, these metal forms are a huge improvement over the wood ones because these metal forms don't give at all. You can see I'm getting the, quite a bit of dome. I'm almost even, pretty much am even with the top of this. So it needs to go a little bit further. So we're going to put some more grease in. Okay, I've let the grease pressure out and the spring back has occurred. So it's already, you know, you, you kind of overbend it and it springs back. So that one came out great. In fact, this one came out way better than the wood one. Sometimes I get little ripples on here on the wood one that I gotta go back through and work out with the hammer and dolly. I have zero ripples on this one. I guess I'm gonna continue to do it this way for a while until I come up with a better way. Probably won't ever come up with a better way until I just really get sick of spending the hour doing these, which may be tomorrow, who knows. What I'm hoping is that the sacrificial piece in the middle, the piece of metal, I'm hoping I could reuse that to do this one. So that's what I'm gonna find out right now is if that's gonna work or not. Okay, reusing this sacrificial piece of metal in here worked extremely well. In fact, there's still a whole lot of grease in there, which means that's less that I'm going to have to pump in there for each one. Okay, do you recall I was saying I might get tired of the grease hydroforming tomorrow? Well, it turns out it was today. 
I've got this air nozzle on here and I just heard insert it in there and hold it in there pretty well and I've got about 120 psi on it there's still grease inside there so it sort of seals everything up pretty good and that 120 psi ends up making this thing really really round so super excited about that it's way easier than pumping all that grease into there okay those cover plates came out great I'm really happy with that you can see this thing sits quite a bit higher than the biscuit now. It used to be pretty much flush with the biscuit. So that's going to be really good. We'll get the handle on there later on. Loving how this guitar is coming out. The details are coming together so nice on it. It's going to be great. I wish this one was as far along though. It looks like it's pretty good, but it, honestly it's way behind. It's got a lot of work to do. All right, I think we can wrap this episode up here. These things are coming out great. If we had tuners for Paul's, we could have played it in this episode, but I just ordered them today, so I don't have them yet. All right. I think that'll do it. The next time you see these, we'll probably be playing them in the next episode. Thanks for watching.